Welcome to Technically Speaking. I'm Steve Brown. I'm the product manager here at Wilson Tool for Press Break Products. And today we wanted to take a closer look at the Extreme Storage Cabinet. It's a cabinet that we get a lot of questions on because it has more of a vertical rollout rather than a horizontal rollout in the cabinet drawer and just the way tools are organized. So we take a look at the features of the cabinet, the overall structure of the cabinet, the ergonomics, the usage, because you can get a little bit closer, show how it's just a little bit different than a traditional horizontal cabinet, and then show each one of the tool styles loaded up. WT, American, and European style tooling loaded right into the drawer so you can take a look at it. So without further ado, let's go take a look at the cabinet. On the outside of each drawer, you'll find a nice heavy duty handle for pulling the drawer in and out a label slot so you can label the content on the inside and then you've got a key up on top so you can lock each drawer individually real simple key lock mechanism and then inside of each drawer on the top you'll have a nice tray where you can put some of the more common tools that you might need throughout the day and you have sheet metal separators so if you want to change the configuration each drawer will come with a nice heavy duty set of casters on the bottom. They're made of nylon. Each cabinet comes with pallet jack relief. So I can slide my pallet jack in from the side and move the entire cabinet to where it needs to be. When you look inside each one of these drawers, you'll see a welded frame. The entire frame is welded together. And then each one of the tooling trays, we'll call this a tooling tray, is held in by a couple flanges on each side and a couple screws, and that's front and back. So if I want to adjust this to the height that's desired, all I do is pull these screws out and adjust my tray up and down. Each drawer has a set of adjusters. So within the tray, I've got this adjuster and I've got an equal on this side, although it's secured down so it can hold that punch that you're seeing. I just wanted to show that there's actually two tracks here. This one's already been set. Now how do you set the track? I'm able to just set the punch in here, pull the track tight, and I'll take a five millimeter Allen wrench and about a three quarter turn on the bottom tightens it down. And I'd repeat that, I'd bring my punch to the front and there's an, a hex head on the front and there's also a hex on the back. And once I secure that in, it's set for that style of tooling. Now let's take a look at the three different styles of tooling that could be loaded into the cabinet. And you'll notice on the punch side, the American tang is actually quite a bit shorter than the European and the WT tang. And that actually does affect how the punch sits in the drawer even when it's been adjusted properly. This is an American style tang. So one thing that you should note when you're putting American tooling in here, depending on the profile, it can actually tip a little bit because the depth of the tang isn't as deep as a European or WT style. So it can be used, it can be adjusted to the tang style. Potentially if I use this, I might move it to the middle move both of these tracks to the middle. In this drawer I'm showing you that the punch separators have already been adjusted. We have WT style punches in here. So the 20 millimeter tang, 787 thousandths wide, and they simply pop in. I'm not even depressing the button to put it in and out. And they're, they're fitting nice and stable. If this punch has one load bearing surface, normally as it's in the press brake, there isn't a lot to grab to the width of that channel. There's not much resting on the shoulder, but it's still stable. If I look at the dual shoulder type of tool, I've got a lot of surface for it to rest right on that track. So another real stable tool. And you can see this punch is maximizing basically the, the adjustment height of the drawer. This one's not. So if I had all tooling this height, potentially I could move this upper rung and possibly even fit in another tray if I wanted to. This punch I'm showing you because it's more of a gooseneck style. And that gooseneck has a lot more on this side of the center line than it does here. So if you notice, these punches all have the tool marking on the outside because they're a fairly symmetric punch. Because this one has more on one side, if I load this in this way and I run my drawer closed, it'll run into the next drawer. So something that's a little more off center, you have a couple options. I can store it this way. It works just fine. Or I could use that center track. I could adjust the center track so my punch is in this way because I reach in for it this way. And then you'd also be able to use the other tracks for other items. You just have to maximize your space. On, the, on this tray, we have the European style punch. And this European style punch, it's got your traditional tang. There are no buttons involved. Um, the depth of the tang is, is deep enough so that when I put it in the channel, 
and I've adjusted my hex screws for the European width. It's very stable in here. It's not going to tip out. Front to back, you still have your really small pieces. So potentially, I'm probably going to consciously sandwich those between something because when I open the drawer front to back, these can move. Um, and well, here's a traditional punch holder. So virtually anything can go in the cabinet that you can adjust the track to the width of the tang or the, the die body in this case. In this drawer, I'm trying to show you the way to store a die. The last, last couple have only showed you punches, but in this case, a die has a tang on the bottom. It's a WT style die, so it's a 13 millimeter tang. And I've also got the width of the die to deal with. So I have the tang width and I have the die width to deal with when I put it in this, this tray. This particular die is probably a little too wide to be thinking I want to take up the whole drawer by setting it on the bottom, make these separated wide enough to put it on the bottom. So what I'd probably do is adjust this so that I can set my die in and it would rest on the two different shoulders. And you can see these big dies sitting here real nice. Um, this is a 50 millimeter die and I'm not getting interference as the drawer closes to hit the frame. So you can put a fairly large size die on that outside track. I've also got that second outside track that we already talked about with the punch, but if you think about it, I also have a gap in the middle here. So that gap as I adjust it to the, the tangs on the outside will leave a gap in the middle. And in some of these dies, it's pretty nice because here I've adjusted for the bigger die on the outside and I've adjusted for the dies on the outside here and it's left a gap that's allowed me to actually adjust. It's adjusted just right so I can take the width of the die and set it in the channel. So now instead of two lengths of tooling possible, I have three lengths of tooling with the die. And how many dies can you get in a cabinet? Well, we know the length of the cabinet and we can calculate that out, but it really will depend on what size of tool in both punch and die I'm actually putting in the cabinet to really determine that. Ergonomics is a real important thing when handling press brake tools. We all know they're heavy. These tall tools are great. I can do a deep box, but they weigh a lot. So when I go to store it and I go to grab it, I want it to be safe. So this cabinet allows you to always be able to get up next to the tool. Either side of the cabinet, I can get up and I can grab this heavy tool and it's next to my body. Same with either one of the other trays. I can grab this tool and it's very close to my body and same with here. So if I grab this tool out of here, I've done very little with my back since I was able to bend my knees and keep it close to my body. We all know there are a lot of options for storing press brake tooling. I just wanted to show you one more option. It's a little bit different. It's a different way of thinking. That's why we thought the video would be helpful to you. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, and subscribe. Technically speaking, now you know.